Hi everyone. So uh, first and for the most, I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, today we're going to talk about the importance of sustainability here in the School of Public Health. And we are going to uh, talk about fulfilling um, the School of Public Health values and vision, which is actually to protect and improve the health and the well-being of all and managing our resources. So within the School of Public Health, we actually formed a sustainability um, committee. And uh, oh, where's my mouse? Sorry, I should have done that. OK, here we go. Uh, and so within that, um, we will um, talk about how we are moving towards becoming a sustainable um, organization as a whole, as in a school, and what are the steps that we're going to be taking to get there. So through this, we will be talking about these changes and mostly changing culture around the campus, um, around the School of Public Health, and also across the campus. And so with that, um, I briefly want to go over some of the uh, main points that we're going to be talking about today and also the purpose of this seminar. Um, so one of the major problems that we have on campus is the waste generation. Um, so we'll get to that and we'll talk about and kind of break down the different types of material that needs to be recycled. Uh, we'll talk about sustainability and we'll also talk about the importance of it, what it means, and what is the work that is needed to actually get us there. So as you know, today we have more people living on, on the earth than ever before. Uh, the world population has actually tripled within the past 100 years um, from 1 billion in the 1800s to 7.7 .7 billion people right now. Um, and we have already surpassed our world carrying capacity. What is carrying capacity? Carrying capacity is the maximum population that uh, an environment could actually sustain indefinitely with all the resources that is actually available there. Uh, we have actually exceeded the Earth's sustainable capacity um, in um, 1796. Uh, sorry, 1976. Uh, so uh, what really got us there is the technology. It's basically, technology has allowed us to raise the Earth's carrying capacity there. And many scientists actually believe that and think that uh, the world carrying capacity will fall within the 9 billion to 10 million people. That means that's the number of people that the Earth could actually um, 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 support. So if you take a look, quick look at what I'm showing you in the maps, um, in the map here you're looking at the population distribution. So that's the reason why this maps look different than the other maps that you probably have seen. Every little box in there actually represents about 0.5 million people. Okay, um, And uh, with that being said, more people, uh, that means there will be more resources that we need and there will be more waste that will be generated. So what we're trying to do here in the School of Public Health is actually to reduce our ecological footprint. Um, and what is ecological footprint? It's the impact of a person or the community has on our environment and is expressed as the amount of land that is required to actually sustain the, um, and sustain the use of the resources and uh, the natural resources or anything else that might be needed as, as, as a result of that. If you take a look at what I have on the right-hand side, uh, this um, figure is actually showing the world average body capacity that is available per person. This blue line on the bottom is where we have the average, which most of the countries have already surpassed that. Um, so what the ecological footprint does it actually tracks how much um, resources are there, how much we need to sustain the lifestyle that we have, and it will it compares the amount of uh, um, or it compares the rate at which we are consuming the energy or resources or whatever that is, and how much there is, um, and how much or how much um, energy the Earth actually has to kind of refill those resources and to kind of absorb the waste that is being generated. So today our global footprint is in, um, in overshoot and it actually takes about 1.5 Earth to sustain the lifestyle that we have now. If we continue the way that we are right now, uh, we will need about uh, three planets to support our lifestyle. 
And by that, I'm going to pass it to uh, Lisa. Okay. So, you know, so to reduce our ecological footprint, we really need to, you know, we'd like to start by reducing the amount of waste that we're generating. We're throwing away resources. Resources are ending up in our landfill that could be used otherwise. So that's what we want to start thinking about here in the School of Public Health. Hopefully you're going to learn some things that you can take back to your individual lives and you can reduce your, the amount of waste you're generating at home. But we definitely want to think about what we're doing here on campus and how we're doing it and how much waste we're, we're generating it. Okay, so what is, when we say waste, solid waste? Well, that's any material that's discarded by being abandoned. That's inherently waste-like. And nearly everything we do, we generate some form of waste. Every day, you're throwing something in the trash can here on campus, at home, uh, and at other places that you visit throughout the day. So waste are classified in a number of different ways. There are biodegradable waste and non-biodegradable waste. Well, if you think about it, and there's some examples of what those are up there. So if we put waste in a landfill that's non-biodegradable, that means it's going to be there forever. Uh, your grandchildren's grandchildren, it will still be in those landfills when they're living on this planet. So of course, when we're thinking about things that we use and have to send you know, uh, to landfills eventually, we would like those to be biodegradable if possible. Waste are also classified according to their effects on human health, whether they're hazardous or non-hazardous. Really what we're going to focus on today is the non-hazardous waste. And waste is also classified by origin. So if it's industrial waste, medical waste, agricultural or animal waste, um, construction or demolition types of waste, and then the waste that we generate in our offices here in the school and at home, which is called municipal solid waste. So the, the next few slides are really gonna be focused on municipal solid waste because that's what we can do and little strategies that we can implement every day to start reducing the amount of municipal solid waste that ends up in our landfills. So if you look at in the United States, how much municipal solid waste are we generating? And you can see since 1960, the red line shows the millions of tons of municipal solid waste. Now this isn't all those other waste streams, just municipal solid waste that are ending up in landfills. And in 2015, that was 262 million tons of municipal solid waste that we generated here in the U.S. That's about four and a half pounds per person per day. So if we can all begin to implement a strategies that even uh, eliminates a fraction of that from our lives, just think of the overall impact that we can make. And after two, 2015, here's the 2017, it was 268 million tons. That was 600 million tons more in just two years that we're generating. So we've got to kind of stop that upward movement. Okay, so what is in our municipal solid waste? In 2017, about a quarter of it was paper and paperboard, which is something that can easily be recycled. Um, you can see plastics make up a little over 13%. You can see yard trimming, food waste, 15%, and so on and so forth. But the point of this is below this line is what's getting into a landfill. What's above the line is what we're actually recycling. So we're only recycling really a fraction of some of the, the materials that are going to the landfill and being incinerated. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I know y'all have all heard that before. And really, we have to think more in terms of reducing what we're using that would end up as being, uh, you know, ending up as waste. Because, you know, if you're just depending on recycling, that's not going to work. A lot of the countries that was taking our materials for recycling have now stopped. 
and it's really very limited of what we can recycle um, in our land in, in, in our community today. And I've got a, a slide I'll show you in just a minute where I'll pull up what's recyclable in Jefferson County and then Miriam's gonna talk about what we can recycle here at UAB's Recycle Center and then what we can easily recyclable here from, from the School of Public Health. <coughs> so reducing is our best option. And this is what we wanna think, y'all to start thinking about as you're planning events such as this one, our other student events, our departmental meetings, what can we do to reduce what we're bringing in the school that's gonna end up in our trash cans? Okay, if you look in Jefferson County, yes, there are some recycling efforts. What you see in gold is really what's coming from uh, the municipalities. The, the green is what's being recycled from businesses. So the point of this is the bulk of what's being recycled other than the commingled recyclables that they pick up at people's homes and, um, and that we kind of contribute if you put in recycled bins around the community. Those, you know, that's that big gold bar. But everything else mostly is coming from businesses that are recycling. And then over on the right, you can see we have five major landfills here in Jefferson County. Four of those accept between 400 and 1,500 tons of waste per day. And the one red dot up there in Jefferson County accepts between 1,500 and 7,500 tons of municipal solid waste every day. So we are putting a lot into landfills here in Jefferson County. And with UAB being the largest, one of the largest employers, and with our student body, we can really make an impact of what's being put in, in to those landfills from, from UAB. Okay, I'm gonna pass it back to Miriam now and she's gonna define sustainability. Okay, so you hear a lot, you hear the word sustainable and sustainability a lot. What does that mean? Uh, what does it really um, have to do? Does it have to do with me, the environment, the job, um, or the community, uh, or with, with the world? Well, it really has to do with all of it. So sustainability is actually defined as the ability to meet the present need without compromising the future need. So if you want to think about the waste that you generate, and Lisa actually mentioned, on a daily basis, we produce about 4.5 um, pounds of waste per person, okay? So think about all that waste that goes into the landfill, uh, all that plastic and packaging that ends up into our uh, garbage bins. So how do we know if we, use, uh, if we are sustainable? So one way that we could actually try to measure um, how sustainable something is, is through using um, <clears throat> what is actually known as the triple bottom line. So the triple bottom line is an accounting framework that incorporates three dimension, um, three dimension of performance. <laughs> so that is equity, environment, and economy. We also call those the three pillars, people, planet, and profit. So how well we could actually balance these objectives would tell you or determine how sustainable you are. Okay, so think of an organization. An uh, organization that has, um, you know, gives good, uh, good security to his um, faculty or let's say uh, workers, um, has good amount of, of, of profit, so they have a positive profit, um, but they're not um, very careful about the environment and in a way they're de Segregate the resources are not or is not an example of a sustainable uh, organization. So now that to make this happen, uh, we want to talk a little bit about some of the School of Public Health uh, sustainability program overviews. So as you know, uh, there are a lot of events happening around the campus and in School of Public Health, and because of that, there is a lot of waste that is generated. Um, an example of that is. Um, today's seminar with the great presence of all of you here. Um, so as you know, in our seminars, launches, and other events, many times our bins are filled with uh, waste, garbage, um, styrofoam, um, containers, plastic utensils, cups, wrappers, you name it. So what we're trying to do here in the School of Public Health is basically um, try to protect our environment. 
because so we want to we want to practice what we teach so one way to do that will be actually to actually to eliminate and reduce the amount <coughs> of of products that comes to the campus so a few things that we're going to be doing is actually try to uh, reduce reuse a lot of the material and products that comes to the campus and also try to recycle that so i wanted to just give you an example of styrofoam Many of you actually buy food from outside uh, or may even bring in styrofoam to the campus. As you know, styrofoam is actually made out of petroleum and is a, it's a petrochemical. And it doesn't matter whether your food is dry or if it's cold, it will actually, a lot of the chemicals from the styrofoam will leach into your food or your drinks, okay? So they're very toxic, so we wanna make sure that we eliminate that, and that is one of the very first things that is gonna disappear off our campus. Another problem with the styrofoam is that they're bulky. They take a lot of space. They end up in a landfills. And um, whether you know it or not, styrofoam actually uh, evaporates some, some sort of a fume that is very poisonous. So it's bad for the ozone layer and also it's bad for our lungs. And um, as I mentioned, uh, within the program, with our sustainability program, we will focus on reducing, reusing, and recycling. So we will reduce the food containers that come into our campus. Uh, we will make sure that uh, there is no styrofoam. Um, and we will also be careful about the utensils. And also, we want to educate everyone about the office supplies. Um, a lot of things that we already have on campus, we want to try to reuse them as much as we can in terms of um, you know utensils um, paper if you do print out something make sure you use the other side and use it as a draft paper and we're also going to try to recycle so the very immediate short-term goals that we have one is to uh, purchase and only use uh, biodegradable product products and we also will phase out that styrofoam uh, food containers. So there are about nine different <coughs> items that you could actually recycle on campus. So the nine different I items that you could recycle is number one, water bottle. Um, to know which type of water bottle they are, just turn upside down in, in a triangle, should say number one. Okay, so we'll do uh, recycle that. Um, office papers could be any type, and we'll get to that. Um, could be color one, envelopes, and so forth. Newspaper, cardboard, um, and also, we could be, uh, we do recycle cans, okay, soda cans also, we'll talk about that. You could also recycle uh, cooking oil or even grease that you have. Um, and these, the majority of these has to go to the recycling center, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so the recycling center is actually located on 620 11th Street South. Um, and so out the door of this building, you can make a laugh into the University World War, right into the 11th Street, and one block <laughs> up, there is a recycling center, which is on the left of the fire station. And the picture on the left is showing you where the recycling, I mean, what it looks like. And there are some gates in the back with the dumpster station, so you could take your waste there and dump it. But I will also tell you um, what are the uh, different types of items that could be recycled right here on campus, okay? So these are the different types of the dumpster stations uh, for different types of uh, waste streams, okay? And uh, let's talk a little bit about what could be recycled on campus in the buildings. Um, so we could actually recycle um, plastic papers uh, and, and cardboards, and I'll get to uh, get to every single one of them and, and kind of break it down. But before that, let me just kind of walk you through where these um, bins or, or recyclable bins are located. At the end of each um, hall, there is the recyclable bins. So we currently have them located in the student lounge. In addition to those, we will be adding in more recyclable bins, so we're working on getting some more. So here is um, a recyclable bin for cans and plastic. Um, and the ones that we're gonna be getting will mostly look like what you're looking at in these pictures, and they will be labeled. 
for each type of the stream uh, or stream waste that could go in it. And um, there's more to come on these. Uh, but basically, the new university is going through some new policies in the building designs. Um, and then we'll talk more about it once they're here. But we're working to get these bins uh, in room 407, 209, and the Age of Chaos, in addition to the ones that we already have. So what is it that you could actually recycle in these bins at the end of each um, floor? <coughs> we have plastic, number one plastic, okay? Um, so all you have to do is make sure that you empty the water bottle, okay, and throw it out. You could also recycle um, soda cans, but you cannot recycle the six packs rings, the utensils, the straws, plates, and cups, or any other plastic that is not number one. Okay, so you cannot recycle those here in this building, but you could recycle them in the recycling center. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, you could recycle these at the end of each floor. All you have to do is just make sure they're empty and then you toss them and do not crush them. Okay, so you don't have to crush those. Um, in terms of aluminum, okay, we'll take uh, soda cans or aluminum cans of any sort, but we do not take the still food cans for soup or cans that you have soup or, or tuna or any other type of aluminum foil or food pans. Okay? So those you could again recycle in the center, but not in the building. So what do we do with the cans? Just make sure that you empty it um, and uh, that's all you have to do. You don't have to rinse it and then you could toss it, okay? What about the papers? Uh, so papers, any type of office paper could be recycled, okay? <laughs> uh, newspaper, magazine, colored papers, envelope, all that uh, could be recycled here in the building. Um, in terms of cardboards, just make sure you make them flat and you could take them to the recyclable bins, which are green, uh, towards the other end of the floor. Okay, and we have them pretty much on every single floor there. Uh, so the few things that we do not accept, you should not uh, throw it in there, would be um, pizza uh, cardboards, okay? Any cardboard or paper that might be contaminated with food. Okay, uh, plates and cups and etc. Okay, and uh, also the cardboards, uh, just like Lisa mentioned, <coughs> they have to be dropped off and flattened and left by or inside. If you could fit it inside the um, the bin, that would be great. Otherwise, you could just put it on this site. And we'll have Lisa talk about some of the stretch okay. plans. So just to recap, in the school, number one plastics can be put in the bin, mostly water bottles and the plastic soda bottles you get, aluminum cans that can be emptied and put in these, and then paper, which can be put in these larger bins, which are at the freight elevator end of the hallways on every floor, okay? Um, and then uh, the other types of materials that UAB accepts would have to go to the recycling center. So those would be things that you are collecting at home that you could then take to the UAB recycling center, which again is open Monday through Thursday. Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday, seven to nine, mm -hmm. and then 4.30 to- Four to 5.30. Four to 5.30. Why is this important? Did y'all know we had a strategic plan in the school? Yes. yes, everybody should know we have a strategic plan in the school. Our vision as a profession and as a school of public health is to aspire to fulfill the great promise of the discipline of public health to protect and improve the health and safety and well-being of all. And I think that sustainability and making sure that we're guarding resources is part of that promise. And stewardship happens to be one of our values in the, in the strategic plan, which says earning the public's trust in how we engage communities and manage our resources. So that's a big part of our, our strategic plan that was developed last year and put into place. So I would like us to think about two things right now. Food ordering practices for the events and things that we're holding and even 
you the students the things that y'all are doing through PHSA and through your other student organizations and then just basic office practices which also involves you too because you use a lot of office supplies as you're uh, going through your degree program so first let's talk about food ordering practices so whenever ordering food or arranging events we ask that you talk to vendors to ask them not to bring polystyrene or styrofoam into the school we don't need styrofoam cups in the school anymore we don't need to buy things that are individually packaged in styrofoam containers individual meals for everybody i mean if we had done this for this group imagine how much styrofoam we would have put in the landfill just today so that's the first thing let's try to eliminate styrofoam from anything and not bring that into the school and the thing is is you know if something happens and something shows up in a styrofoam container we're not telling you to send it back or anything like that we're just saying let's try to move forward that and reduce that as much as possible and eventually we may be able to influence food vendors to change the types of packaging that they're using for the food and ultimately that's what we want to try to do we want to bring um, as few single-use plastic items into the school as possible and at water bottles we want to try to reduce that I mean we have a few at the end of each thing but and we know that there's always going to be a situation like this where somebody's going to have forgot their personal water cup and that's okay to have a few of those let's just make sure they're number one plastic so that we can put them in the recycle bin after and we don't have to put them in the, the municipal solid waste stream which is our garbage here um, so and then after events let's be as diligent as we can to try to separate some of this stuff as possible so that's why we thought that we, we went to had to go to two different floors to get recycle bins on each side of the room here but we knew where we were going to have a large group so anytime you're going to have a large group let's try to get those and bring them in there to make things easily recyclable you've got here um, and again just like Miriam talked about a while ago the university is trying to come up with some new bins that will be more dispersed throughout the school and we as a sustainability committee are definitely trying to get bins in room 407 this room because we have a lot of events here in 209 because we have a lot of meetings and things that have food in that room and the edge of chaos but hopefully eventually they will be all around the school so it'll be easily to easy to recycle for everybody um, we want to encourage faculty staff and students to bring their own cups plates silverware when, whenever possible and that's why we gave you these today we want you to keep this in your backpack and when you come to events where they're serving food we want you to use these and then there are uh, uh, you know sinks at the end of the hallway that you can rinse them off in the restroom there's a little kitchenette on the first floor where you can rinse things off and then put them back in there and at night you know take them home wash them really good put them back in your backpack just think of all the one use plastic items we can reduce if just we personally started taking and quit using plastic forks spoons and knives so this is a challenge for everybody make sure you get a sharpie pen and write your name on the back of this so you don't use it and get it confused with someone else okay all right so that's a challenge for everyone so again at your events whenever possible move towards discontinuing the use of these one use plastic knives forks spoons and straws we don't need straws anymore everybody we don't need straws um, and uh, encourage people to have those now every once in a while we're going to have a guest here in the school of public health um, who isn't going to have these somebody's going to forgive one of those and you know it's not the end of the world but let's have some biodegradable alter alternatives and up here on the front table I have some bamboo forks so that we can order those and start having those here in the school and just put a few of those <laughs> out for the people who who forget okay and then that way when they get into the municipal start solid waste stream they're going to 
degrade over time and they're not going to be sitting there for when our grandchildren's grandchildren are trying to figure out what to do with all of it. So again, in the school, we can only recycle number one plastic bottles. I will say that Jefferson County, if you live in, in a municipality that recycles in Birmingham, they do also recycle number two plastics, but we do not here at UAB, okay? Um, so if we have something at one of our events that has number two and you live in a municipality that will recycle that, please consider taking that item home and putting it into your recycle bin there so that it doesn't end up in the landfill. Okay. Does everyone know how to check what number it is? Yeah, does every, on the bottom, everybody knows on the bottom of plastic items, there's a little triangle with the arrows and there's a number in between it. One, two, five, seven, and there's some other numbers like that. In Jefferson County right now, they are, at, in Birmingham Municipality, they are only recycling one and two. Those red and white solo cups are not one or two. So do not purchase those anymore. At Costco's, they have some clear colored um, cups, and those are number two. So be careful. That. They only take the bottles. Okay. Yeah, they it, it, only it, bottles. Only, yeah, in Jefferson County. Mm. <coughs> See, they did not tell us that when they came to my neighborhood association. <laughs> they need to do a better job with education. So we'll figure all of this out. And y'all, like I said, it's very complex. But the thing, if we can reduce what we're using then we're not going to have this issue anyway. Now, is it always, are we going to end up with something number two? Yes. Today we got some things in trays because we were trying to order things in bulk. But what I kind of want us all to try to do is try to reuse some of these items and not put them directly into the landfill. So as much as we can reuse the items and we've got a drawer. I'm going to show you a picture on the next slide of the things that we have, the serving things. If we can reuse those, let's do that. And we have sinks that we can clean those up afterward. And try to avoid individually packaged lunches and things like that for people. Because again, just think how much waste we would have had in this room if we wouldn't have had that. And we talked to Jimmy John's before we ordered about their sustainability. And we're going to be finding out more vendors and made sure, you know, that they were bringing things in cardboard that then is not going to be contaminated with food that we can put into this recycle bin over here after the seminar. So um, it's taken a lot out of that. Um, and then again, as you're talking to vendors and ordering things, ask them, are your products recyclable? Are they biodegradable? Because the more we can influence the vendors, the better off it's gonna be later on. Okay, and again, reusing some of the things that are not recyclable before we put them in the landfill. So in the School of Public Health, the sustain members of the Sustainability Committee went around the, the, to the different departments and just kind of collected all of the items that we could find. And you know what? We have this stash now that's located in room 209 uh, in the wooden cabinet that was empty over against the wall um, that we kind of used to lay food out on. So if you need things right now, this is where you can go to get them. And there's some things in there that are not recyclable, but we just didn't want to throw them out. That would, wait, that would defeat the purpose, right? We might as well use them and then throw them out. So this is a, where it's centrally located and there is tons of serving spoons and things like that. So as vendors are delivering food, please don't accept any more of that stuff. Let's use what we have in the school, rinse it off, clean it. We've got dishwashing liquid in the sink, at least on the first floor and probably on several of the other floors. So just rinse them off and then put them back in the drawer so that they can be reused, okay? Um, and don't accept any more sugar packets and sack. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's so much of that stuff in those drawers down there, so please don't do that. And there's forks and knives. Unfortunately, there's no spoons. Apparently, there was a run on the spoons. But um, and then there's some plates and cups, and y'all see the kinds of items that we have. So please use those up. Now, for office practices, really simply, if you're printing something off or have to print something off, let's, let's set our default to print 
both sides so that, that that happens commonly. If you have to do something to print off on one side, well then use, but then consider using the reverse of that when you get through with the document as scrap paper or, you know, so that we're not having to buy pads and bring those into the school. Um, Use electronic agendas whenever possible. And if there are handouts that you need to give to the, to the group that you're meeting with, you know, make those electronic attachments to the meeting invite or email those out beforehand so that you're not having to print those things out and giving, giving them <coughs> to them. We've already tried to eliminate space heaters, thank you Andy Rux, in the School of Public Health because they use a lot of power and people forget and they leave them on too, which is kind of dangerous. So, um, you know, no space heaters because it's crazy for the air conditioning to be running and somebody to have heat on. You know, it's just, it, we're, it, we're just sucking power. Yeah, and we, we have done that if y'all don't know, if y'all haven't noticed. <laughs> so, and then use LED lighting whenever possible. Um, and you know, another thing to your point, if you're cold natured, just make sure you have a sweater at your desk or in your backpack to use. Um, we've changed the lighting in the school to LED, and Andy says that we do still have a few LED light bulbs available, so if your lamp light bulb or something like that burns out, we do have some of those. And just remember, when we are buying things, just make sure you're buying things that, are, that have been recycled, uh, that are recyclable products, or that it's something that we can reuse, or something that we can recycle and not put in the waste stream. And UAB has a, when uh, Julie was in the sustainability office, they created this UAB green office checklist. And we're going to be working towards meeting this in the school because we would like to be the first green school on campus. Wouldn't that not be cool? And there's simple things that we all can do to make that happen. If you're planning an event, Sustainability also has guidelines of things to think for, uh, think about when you're planning your event, so pre-event, things to think about during your event, and things to think about post-event to make your event more sustainable. So there's the link to this, and we'll make sure that this link gets out there, but you can just Google UAB Sustainability Green Events Guide, and it'll come up because that's what I did to find this link. <laughs> so. Um, so those, and it's really easy things that you can do. And I think the thing is to remember, reduce, reuse, recycle, and I know this one's kind of backwards, but um, reduce what we're bringing in the school. Do we absolutely need it? If we need it, make sure it's either reusable or recyclable. And, to get to that green school initiative, one of the first things we have to do is a waste audit. And we're going to be doing the waste audit on the 27th, on the 27th of January, so coming up soon. And what we're going to do, y'all are going to see some activity outside of our doors here. Hopefully it won't be raining that day. If it is, we may have to postpone it. But what we're going to do is look at what we generate as far as waste in a 24-hour period here in the School of Public Health, and we're gonna weigh that and kind of figure out and start monitoring over time to see if we can kind of reduce what is getting in our waste stream and how much, and so that we can come up with some other strategies. One more thing, um, I quickly wanted to introduce our student organization or student club. So we wanted to kind of enforce the vision and, and make sure that we all come together as a sustainable organization as a whole. So it's not just among the student, not among the faculty and staff, but we wanted to bring in the students. So we have this great organization of students who actually worked together over the last semester and uh, came up with an organization that is called the Green Thumb. Um, <clears throat> And so, of course, there is a you know, defined mission and values for this organization. And so what they're trying to do is to improve the sustainability efforts through different processes. There will be educational lectures, um, and there will be other activities that are related to sustainability on campus. So this is a way to actually bring all the students together from the School of Public Health, School of Engineering, and other schools around the campus. We already have uh, advisors from the undergrad um, <clears throat> school 
of Public Health and also Dr. Nazari from the School of Engineering. So if there is any questions that you may have about learning about different types of you know, activities that you could do and how you could become involved in um, our sustainability program, please uh, come and learn about this. You could also learn about the organization on Engage and you could uh, look up the hours. So basically for now, uh, the, the organization is going to be meeting on Wednesdays bi-weekly starting this January the 22nd from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. There will be food and other things that will be offered. Mm -hmm.